Thanks to the Asian aviation boom, we've seen some of Asia's airlines, particularly the budget carriers, rise to a level of prominence and in some cases gaining a large share or a majority of the domestic markets in their respective countries. For the island archipelago of Indonesia, air travel is an essential part of the transportation infrastructure within the country. Prior to the 2000s, much of Indonesia's aviation industry was dominated by one airline. But like its counterparts in Asia, the skies were deregulated and through that some airlines have emerged. One of those carriers from Indonesia is the Lion Air Group, which not only has become the largest airline in Indonesia, it's also one of the more prominent airline groups in Southeast Asia, which will be featured in this video. The story of Lion Air begins with two brothers, Kunan and Rusti Karana, who as entrepreneurs saw the opportunities of the growing aviation market in Asia, especially the islands of Indonesia, which has been dominated by Garuda Indonesia, which along with being government backed, did see competitors come and go. This changed in the late 1990s and the early 2000s when Indonesia's government began making it easier to get a permit to start a new airline company as part of efforts to boost the economic growth in the country. These easing of restrictions saw the start of new companies such as Lion Air where the Kirana brothers who founded their airline in 1999. With plans to become a low-cost airline, the Kirana brothers' new airline would adopt the name of their travel agency at the time named Lion Tours, taking the name Lion Air. And within a year later, on June 2000, the airline's first flight took off from Jakarta to Pontianak using at least Boeing 737-200 aircraft. As Lion Air started operations, so too did other airlines within the next subsequent years. And being in a deregulated industry, the fledgling new airline would acquire more passengers, though the Indonesian aviation industry saw a brewing price war between airlines. Like their counterparts in Asia, Indonesians would have their pick of choices in airlines and fares, though this created a highly competitive market within the airlines, including Lion Air at a critical time in its history. Growth would be mostly within the domestic sector as the airline grew its network in the country. And to help facilitate this growth, it started its first subsidiary, Wings Air, for low-density domestic routes in 2003. And with the inclusion of international flights by the year 2003, the airline already had 32 destinations. However, a series of incidents between Lion Air aircraft and other airlines in Indonesia, such as Lion Air 583 in 2004, heavily impacted the safety rating of Indonesia's aviation sector in other parts of the world from the European Union, which Lion Air, though it did not have any flights plans for Europe, was among the Indonesian airlines added to the European Union airline blacklist from 2007 to 2016. However, the flight bans to Europe did not deter Lion Air's expansion plans, as it placed orders with the US aircraft manufacturer Boeing in the mid-2000s, including an order for 30 Boeing 737-900 ERs, which Lion Air was the launch customer. By 2008, the airline would have around 178 aircraft on order. The following year in 2009, the airline would start Omrah pilgrimage flights to the Middle East using a Boeing 747 that was also used on some high-capacity domestic flights. Despite the challenges of the European flight ban, the airline was growing in terms of passenger capacity and challenging the airline like Garuda Indonesia, especially within the domestic market of Indonesia. To accomplish this, the airline would make some landmark orders and establish some new subsidiaries. Specifically, three subsidiaries were started in 2013. A full-service domestic carrier, Batik Air, and the Indonesian airline group would start a subsidiary in Thailand, Thai Lion Air. The most interesting of the three subsidiaries is the Malaysian-based Malindo Air, which was a reply to Air Asia's encroachment on the Indonesian airspace with Indonesia Air Asia. In November of 2011, the airline placed a landmark order, a world record of over 230 Boeing aircraft, including the Boeing 737 MAX, worth around over $21.7 billion at the time. And this was followed up by another landmark order two years later in 2013 with European aircraft manufacturer Airbus. For a similar amount of aircraft, though this was for the A320s and the A321s, worth an estimated over 22 billion US dollars. Not only was the 737 MAX order was unprecedented, it was significant for Boeing and the 737 MAX program, which Lion Air would be the launch customer for the future generation of the popular 737 aircraft. With that, the first Boeing 737 MAX, a MAX 8, took off with Melindo Air in May of 2017. 
Along with those orders, the airline would acquire Airbus A330 aircraft for higher capacity needs and placed orders for the A330neos, which are disputed amongst some of the subsidiaries of the airline group. While Lion Air had its plans of its future with the MAX, everything would change following one fateful day. That day came on October 29, 2018, when Lion Air JT610, which was using a new two-month-old Boeing 737 MAX 8, crashed after takeoff from Jakarta, resulting in the loss of all passengers. And with the crash of Ethiopian Airlines ET302 five months later, one of the more prominent airlines in Southeast Asia would be forever linked to the most highly scrutinized aircraft in recent history. While some of its counterparts in Indonesia have folded, the Lion Air Group, especially Lion Air, is one of the more prominent players in Indonesia's aviation scene, which along with the subsidiaries, combined for around half of the Indonesian aviation market share for domestic travel. Individually, Lion Air has around a 35% stake in the Indonesian domestic market, which is still comparatively larger to Garuda's. The airline operates its main hubs out of Jakarta and Surabaya with, with other airports in Indonesia serving as secondary hubs. The combined fleet is made up of around 323 aircraft, exceeding its Malaysian competitor, the Air Asia Group, with its 243 aircraft. Of the airlines under the Lion Air Group, the Lion Air has the most aircraft with 120 planes, with a fleet comprised of mostly Boeing 737 Next Generation aircraft with some of the 737 MAX that have been delivered. The airline group also has other aircraft such as the ATR-72s which is used by mostly Wings Air and Batik Air's A320s. One thing to note and, and also with the Indonesian aviation sector is the duopoly of Indonesia's airlines, most notably between Garuda and Lion Air after all the other competitors have mostly faded away. And along with Garuda, the Lion Air group has been called by government officials in Indonesia to lower airfares to boost the travel opportunities in the country. Another criticism of the airline has been the issues of business management and the safety record which is shared not just with Lion Air and its subsidiaries, but also other airlines in Indonesia in the past. When discussing budget airlines in Asia, this is one of the more prominent airlines, and I felt this video was needed to be made as I've already covered several ambitious airlines in the Southeast Asian area, such as Cebu Pacific, Air Asia, and Vietjet. While it has its challenges and is forever linked to the 737 MAX, the roots of Lion Air still remains with the entrepreneurial spirit of the Karana brothers and their impact with Lion Air and the Indonesian aviation industry, as well as that of Southeast Asia, which with the growth of the budget airlines in the area has been a key battleground for the fight between Boeing and Airbus when it comes to aircraft orders. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how the development of the relationship between Boeing and the Lion Air group will go further after the 737 MAX and the scrutiny with the issues around the aircraft. And we'll also have to keep an eye on how it navigates the Indonesian aviation sector, which is reported as the fifth largest domestic market in the world. I definitely hope you enjoyed this video about the past, present, and future of the Lion Air Group. If you like this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. This has been Flights in Asia, highlighting the news and updates from the aviation and travel scene in the Asia Pacific. Thank you for watching and have a great day.